If you are watching this video around the date of release, the 2024 World Ice Hockey Championship is underway. This iteration of the tournament is hosted in my home country of Czech Republic, in the capital city of Prague and in the eastern city of Ostrava. Tens of thousands of tourists, from Czechia and from abroad, are descending onto the two cities, ready to experience the largest hockey event of the year, and definitely not to get drunk while they're here. Thankfully, both cities have made extensive preparations to ensure the smooth handling of the massive demand. In this video, we'll take a look at the transport implications of the massive tournament, the improvements that have been made just in time for the event, and how, in my opinion, the cities are ideal for handling the massive influx of tourists. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. Getting to Prague and Ostrava is thankfully quite simple. Fans can choose multiple ways to get to each city. Both cities have an international airport, major train station and a long distance bus terminal. Focusing on Prague, fans from farther away fly to Václav Havel International Airport. The airport is more than large enough to handle the increased traffic, since it's already been stress tested like this many times before. For example, the final of the European Conference Football League, played between West Ham United and Fiorentina, which was played in Prague, brought tens of thousands of fans to the city, most of whom came here by plane. If the airport survived British football fans, it could survive anything. After getting off the plane, fans have a few options. Taking a rental car or calling a taxi is certainly an option, as Václav Havel Airport has lots of parking, but thankfully, it's mostly confined to multi-story parking garages. There are no massive surface parking lots, at least not at the airport directly. However, from my personal experience, most travelers passing through this airport use public transport. There are multiple bus lines and one trolleybus line going from the airport to the city, but the main one is trolleybus number 59, going from the airport to Nádraží Veleslavín, where fans can transfer to a tram, a train or to the A metro line. In preparation for the tournament, this city has deployed a fleet of massive, double articulated trolleybuses on this route from the airport. Besides the greener operation, fans definitely appreciate the increased capacity. From my personal experience with riding the line, the single articulated bus that used to run on this route tended to get overcrowded quite frequently. Fans from closer away can take a train or a long distance bus to the city. Both the Prague main train station and the Florence Central bus station are connected to the tram and metro network, ensuring that fans don't need to use cars to get to the games. Traveling to Ostrava is a similar story. If the plane coming to the city can get through the famous local air, fans can take a train into the city. Travelers coming on trains and buses can use Ostrava's extensive tram network to move around the city, ensuring that everyone can experience the games without the stress of driving. Arriving to the cities is one thing, but getting to the venues is another. Thankfully, both cities have discovered as well. The championship is being held in two arenas, Prague's O2 Arena and Ostrava's Ostravar Arena. Both venues are located in the cities themselves rather than in some bumfuck nowhere suburbs and are equipped with great public transport links. The O2 Arena is served by the B Metro line and a tram and a bus stop. There's also the Praha Libain train station, which is about a 15 minute walk from the arena. The Ostravar arena is served by a tram stop. The transit authorities of Prague and Ostrava aren't sleeping either. Both cities are boosting frequencies of bus, train, tram and metro lines on game days, and Ostrava is introducing a special tram line and a special transit ticket for the games. Compared to other venues, especially those in North America, there is a striking lack of an Atlantic Ocean of parking. It's clear that the designers planned the stadiums for transit use first. Parking is still available, with underground lots and small surface lots, but most fans choose to take transit to these venues. Now this is all well and good, but some people might ask, why is this so important? Why can't we just slap a gigantic parking lot underneath or next to the stadium and call it a day? Affordable, frequent and efficient transit is key to holding truly great events. There are a few reasons for this. Firstly, transit has a much, much higher passenger capacity than cars. The capacity depends on the mode, 
but one of the highest capacity transit modes, the double-decker suburban train, has the capacity to carry over 50,000 people per hour per direction. In comparison, a road similar in size to a double-track train right-of-way can only carry a few thousand people per hour per direction. Even lower throughput modes, like trams or light metros, have the capability to carry tens of thousands of people per hour. For an example, let's return back to Prague in the O2 arena. The B metro line serving the arena has a capacity of about 21,000 passengers per hour per direction. Add the tram and bus stop to that, and we get close to 40,000 passengers per hour per direction. Even disregarding the Praha Liban train station, transit serving the arena directly can move the entire capacity of the venue, which is about 20,000 people, in less than an hour. If everyone, or at least a majority of people drove, it would take way longer, and it would probably cause a large traffic jam. The Ostravar Arena's tram stop can move the entire venue's capacity of about 10,000 attendees in less than an hour as well. For an example of a major sporting event being held in a car-centric area, there are the 2028 Los Angeles Summer Olympic Games. While there are great strides being made in improving public transport in the area, it's clear that cars will still play a crucial role in the transport of spectators for the LA 2028 Summer Olympics. For example, this is SoFi Stadium, slated to host the opening and closing ceremonies and football and archery competitions. It's a gigantic venue, able to hold 70,000 people, or about 3.5 Prague O2 arenas. However, there's something even more gigantic, the stadium's parking lot. The stadium was clearly designed with cars in mind, with most people driving their private cars to the venue. The closest major public transport station is the downtown Inglewood metro station on the K-Line, which is about a 37-minute walk away from the stadium, mostly along wide roads. There are some better, less car-oriented venues, like the Crypto.com Arena, located only a 2-minute walk away from the Pico metro station, but these are the exception rather than the norm. There are more reasons behind why transit links to sports venues are so important than just the convenience of attendees. A major sporting event, like the Olympic Games or the World Ice Hockey Championship, brings all eyes of the world to the host cities. Organizing these games is a PR campaign for the host cities as much as it is a sporting event. I'd argue that having crippling, gridlocked traffic, poor air quality, excessive noise, etc. from cars is a really bad look. Another, less important but still valid reason is this. If you have ever been to a sporting event, especially here in the Czech Republic, you know that beer flows by the gallon inside the stadiums. Lots of people enjoy the games with a beer in their hand. One of the reasons behind why this is possible is the great transit links. If people wanted to enjoy a beer at SoFi Stadium, for example, they would either have to designate one person of their group as the driver, or call an Uber, which is really, really expensive nowadays. This point is definitely not as important as the first one, but at least here, the populace would absolutely riot if we weren't able to drink beer at our games. Last but not least, investment in transit brought by major sporting events can bring lasting benefits for the city's permanent population. More transit ridership leads to cleaner air, less traffic congestion and deaths, wealthier citizens by people not having to spend shit tons of money on cars, etc. In conclusion, Major events are made considerably better if people can take transit to and from the venues. Key investments in transit, brought by major sporting events, can improve the quality of life for the permanent population. I hope that more cities of large events will invest in their public transport infrastructure, as it can bring numerous benefits. Anyways, thank you so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support the channel, I've put a few affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. Buying anything from these links will directly support the channel, and that would be greatly appreciated. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramly and I'll see you next time. Bye! Firstly, Transit has a much, much higher passenger- <laughs> Bro... Ah... For an example, let's return back to Prague and the O2 Arena. The B metro line serving the arena has a cap- oh, fuck's sake. There are more reasons behind- mm. Why?